Hey, happy Mother's Day. Well, to all mothers, today is your day. Your love, you are appreciated, you are cherished by your family members because you have done so much for them. You love them, you pray for them, you sacrifice so much for them and for everybody else's well-being beside yours. And hopefully today, today, your family will appreciate you, taking you out for a good dinner and do all the housework, housework chores for you, all right? Now, Mother's Day was originated in 1907 by this lady by the name of Anna Jarvis. And the first Mother's Day, Mother's Day celebration was held actually in a church in 1907. That was 114 years ago. Isn't that wonderful that the church were the first people who actually recognize and celebrate mothers? And today, everyone in the world is celebrating Mother's Day. And the trend was started by the church. Woohoo! So at different ages, we saw our mothers differently, don't we? At age four, my mom can do anything. She's Wonder Woman. At age 12, my mom doesn't know everything. At age 14, my mom doesn't know anything. At age 18, my mother is old-fashioned. Oh, the way she dressed, oh, but she's so old-fashioned. At age 25, my mom knows a few things. At age 35, hey, before we decide, let's get mom's opinions. At age 45, I wonder what my mom would say about this. At age 65, I wish I could talk to my mom one more time. See, at different ages, we saw our mothers differently. And some of you are at this stage where you wish that you could speak to your mother one more time. And some of us are at this stage when we are newly wed and we are new mothers. And then we realize that how did our mothers do it? She has six, seven, eight children and she did it so well. I have only one. And yet, you know, I'm struggling with that. You know, then we really appreciate our mothers. Not easy to be a mother, especially when you have a crying baby, right? And you have five crying babies at the same time. <laughs> there was, uh, you know, this woman who was going shopping at a supermarket and her daughter just cried and wail and scream as she pushed the shopping cart. She was crying. This young girl uh, was crying and wailing and screaming. And every time she wail and she cried, the mother would say, calm down, calm down, Ellen. Um, calm down, Ellen. Calm down, Ellen. <laughs> Calm down, Ellen. It's okay. Calm down, Ellen. And she was kicking her leg in the air. And all she said was, calm down, Ellen. We are, we are finishing soon. Calm down. And, and, and when she finished her shopping, putting all the, you know, the, the food stuff and whatever she needs into the shopping cart, she pushed and, and, uh, towards the cashier. And the cashier noticed uh, you know, the mother being so calm and yet the baby was crying and she was so calm. And the cashier spoke to the lady, spoke to her and said, ma'am, I, I so admire you. You know, your child is throwing a fit, but you are so calm. And, and you have been calling her, that you've been telling this little girl to calm down, Ellen. I heard this, I saw you and I, I really admire you. And the mother then turned to uh, the cashier and said, look, I am Ellen. She was actually telling herself, calm down, Ellen, calm down, Ellen. <laughs> How many mothers are out there like that? <laughs> well, this is my mother. She's a wonderful mother. I mean, when, she, when I was younger, I thought she's the most fiercest mother or the most fiercest woman in this entire world because she ruled by the king. Why? But she's also very sporty. She's very hardworking. She do everything to raise her four children up well. And all four of us have grown up to be good, wonderful adults today because of her. And this was her picture when she got her second COVID vaccination shot just uh, weeks ago. You know, every time um, in most family. 
uh, people want that want the children. Wait till your father come home, uh, then you know what to then then you better then you you know what he's going to do to you. But in my house when we were younger, you know the the saying goes, wait till your mother find out, then you know what she's going to do to you. Ah, uh, you, you uh, wait your mother come back. Uh, no, it's just so it's my mother, not my father. She's a fierce. My mom, my dad is a gentleman, you know, very gentle. Hardly saw him getting angry or whatsoever. And he will always protect us from my mom. But because of her discipline, I am who I am today. I really appreciate her. So in, uh, uh, for today's Mother's Day message, I want to talk about Hannah. And the story is found in First Samuel chapter 1. Hannah was the first wife of Elkanah. And she unfortunately was barren and she was very disappointed and disappointed about it. And, you know, for women who are barren, we don't understand why. Only God knows he decides what's best for us. Perhaps God has a better plan for us and that's why he then instituted something that we have to go through in our lives. And for, for uh, in the instance of um, Hannah, she was barren. And during the time of Old Testament, if your wife cannot give birth to a child, then after 10 years, your husband has the right to marry another woman. Elkanah then married another wife, another woman called Panina. And Panina had 12, not one, not two, not three. 12 children, oh goodness. Can you imagine how Hannah felt? First one born, congratulations, this is nice. Second one, oh, okay. Third one, fourth one came up, boop. Fifth one, boop. Five, six, boop. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, boop. She can give boop like that, doop, 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 doop. And she was barren. Can you imagine herself comparing to this woman? What's wrong with me? Why, why can I give birth? Why just one trial? And she can give 10, 12, 10 sons, two daughters. Wow. You know what? And to make things worse, Panina then always provoke Hannah. Hannah is barren. I have child children. Hannah is barren. I'm not sure if this was the song that she sang, but she would always provoke Hannah. And Hannah was very, very despondent. And she would go to God in prayer. She, she kept praying and praying and praying and praying and praying, and she never stopped praying. And you know what? Eventually, God heard her prayers, and she gave birth to Samuel. Samuel is one of the most important prophets in the history of Israel. He was not just a prophet, he was a judge, and he was also the kingmaker. He would appoint the three kings of Israel. You know, from someone who is barren, God has a plan, God has a plan. And gave she, God gave her a son called Samuel. And, and can you imagine how proud she would be to see Samuel being the prophet and the judge of Israel? So women, if you're going through some struggle today, don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. You don't give up God, you know. Don't give up yourself and don't give up God. You know, no matter what, just Pray and pray, and God has a better plan for you. And therefore, I want to share three encouragements for all the mothers and women here today. Man, you can also take this message for yourself and contextualize it into your own lives, okay? There are three encouragements that I want to give to all mothers and women. The first encouragement to mothers and women is that God hears our prayers. God is always within the earshot of our prayers. Whatever that you, uh, whatever that you are struggling with, you know what God knows because God hears. God listen to your prayers. God is never too far away from us, and He never forsake us. He never abandon us, and He's there listening to all our prayers. Hannah prayed, and God listened. In her deep anguish, Hannah prayed. Wow, Panina was a was abusing her, was provoking her. Hannah was barren. I have 10 children. Hannah was barren. It was, can you imagine? She just said, I cannot take it anymore, Lord. You cannot even give me one, but she had 12. And she prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And God listened. No matter what it is, even when God 
is not answering your prayer. Always believe that there is a plan that perhaps God may have for you. Don't stop praying. Don't stop communicating with God. Pray. Prayer is not a just a spiritual act. Prayer is a relational act. Just like if you are having a relationship with your spouse, your husband, your children, you know what? You, when you communicate with them, it's, it's, for, um, it's fostering relationship. You understand each other better. And so when we pray, we are fostering our relationship with God better. You know, we can pray as we walk. We can pray as we eat. And we can pray as we do our stuff. We can talk to God all the time. It's just talking to God. And Hannah never gave up praying. You know, Paul says, do not worry about anything, but pray and ask God for everything. And when you pray, always give thanks. And this is the way to pray. So, hey, leave your worries behind and connect with God. Right? Connect with God and know that God hears you. And, and when you pray, always give thanks. And God's peace will Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The peace that God gives is so great that we cannot understand it. So, you know, when we pray, when we enter into the presence of God, as we pray, we have that peace of God in us. And God is always there so that we can, we, so, you know, we can page Him at any time and anywhere. You know, those were the days when we used pager to, to connect with another person with page. Hey, I'm here. Where are you? And all that. And God is always there. Let's page him. P-A-G-E. First, you can pray for everything. You can ask for everything. And you give thanks for everything. This is how you pray. Pray God. Whatever big or small, you know, pray. You know, if you need a car park lot in the mall, pray. God, give me a lot in the car park. When you need something, Pray, pray. It doesn't hurt anything. If God don't answer, all right, he doesn't answer. At least I pray. You know, the thing is, if you don't pray, then you will never get any answers. But at least you pray. Even if you don't get any answers, at least you pray and God hears. Perhaps God hears and God will attend to you. And if God don't attend to you, that means he say, hey, there's something else for you. Ask God, whatever, big, small, Ask God for everything. And remember, in doing your praying and your asking, always count your blessing and give thanks to God for everything that you have. Okay? For everything that you have. And this is how we pray. Pray for everything. Ask for everything. Then give thanks for everything. Because God hears your prayer. God is always there. He's always in the year shot of your prayer. He's always there. When you say, God, when you turn to him, he will turn to you. When you run to him, he's already there. He's always there for you. Mothers, be encouraged. No, no matter what's going on with your children, perhaps they have behavioral problems or situations that be on you. you know, pray, pray and ask, you know, and just be reminded that God hears. God hears our prayer. Because in Jeremiah 33 verse 3, it says, Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things that you do not even know. So sometimes, you know, when we pray for this A, but God answer us with C because C is much better than A. But we are so fixated on A that when God doesn't answer A, we thought, oh, something is wrong with us. God don't love us. No, God has a better plan. Perhaps C is better than A. And therefore, he's trying to direct you to A. So God hears your prayer and he wants to direct you to a better path that he has planned for you. Number one, the first encouragement for all the women and the, uh, mothers and women who are listening in today, God hears. Number two, God heals. He can heal any illness and any diseases. So in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 20, in the course of time, not sure how long, just like Sarah, she gave birth at 99 years old. But, you know, everything is possible with God. So in the course of time, uh, you remember her rival, Panina, had 12 children. That means if every year Panina gave birth to a child, this, the waiting could be 12 years or the waiting could be 20 years. We do not know. But in the course of time, Hannah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. Woohoo! And she named him Samuel because saying, because I have asked the Lord for him. God heard her prayer and God healed Hannah. 
of her womb, uh, her closed womb. You know, Jesus has always been concerned about children. You know, when he saw children, he asked the children to come to him. You know what? Children, uh, God, children has a special place in God's heart. Uh, and in the New Testament, you know, Jesus healed Jairus' daughter, raised Jairus' daughter from the dead. And then he healed this official son uh, in John chapter 4. And initially when, when this official that, uh, that came to Jesus, Jesus wasn't so willing to talk to him. But this official son persists and begged and pleaded with Jesus. And Jesus saw his faith and then went to his home and healed the son. And he also raised a widow's, uh, widow's son from the dead in Luke chapter 7. She was desperate. She cried out to God, God, can you please help me? Help me, help me. You know, can you heal my son, please? And God raised that widow's son. And God also, Jesus also healed a boy of epilepsy in Mark chapter 9. And then she delivered a woman's demons, a woman's demon-possessed daughter in Matthew chapter Fifteen. So all these are children that God has concern about, and He then healed them. God listened, and God healed. God can do it. All things are possible with God. You know the the common facts about all the parents in the in those situations uh, where Jesus healed the children. There there's something that's common uh, that's among, among the parents. Number one, they were all desperate. You know. All parents would be would be desperate if their children have, have fallen ill, and or maybe they have gone wayward because of their love for the child. Perhaps that's why they were feeling desperate. The parents were also confused. What's going on? What what have I done something wrong with my life? What's going on? And then they were persistent. They have not. They do not give up. When Jesus was saying, "Why are you?" calling me, they was, please, please, you, have, you, you know, they pleaded with him. And one thing that they all have in common to help them is that they believe that this is the Son of God and he is the miracle-working God. You know what? God has healed before, he can heal again. God has touched lives before, he can touch lives again. God has changed lives before and he can change lives again. God has transformed lives before, he can transform lives again. Your children, it's no different. If God has done it before, he can do it again. Just believe. He told Jairus, four powerful words, don't worry, just believe. And remember, God is still a miracle working God. So, first two encouragement for mothers and women God hears your prayer. God still in the miracle working business. He can still do it. And we have so many testimonies of how God has healed many. Third encouragement for mothers and women God honors you. And when God honors you, He gives you favor. And you can do all things through Christ who uh, strengthened you. God honor those who honors him. You know, in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 11, when, when Hannah went to the temple, she prayed. She prayed. She said, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me, and do not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life, and no razor blade will ever be used on his head. You know, the meaning of no razor blade will ever be used on his head is that the mother... Hannah would consecrate this child to the temple. And during the temple, in the service to the temple, they don't cut their hair. And therefore, she was willing, if you give me this child, I will honor this child by consecrating this child to serve you in the temple. And she is willing to do that. And then in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 21, after um, Samuel was born, this was when God had heard her prayer and God healed her womb and she was able to give up to a child. In verse, 20, uh, verse 21, when her husband Akama went up with all his family to offer annual sacrifice to the Lord and to fulfill his vow, 
Hannah did not go. She said to her husband, after the boy is weaned, I will take him and present him before the Lord and he will always live there always. And so she wanted to nurse him, you know, to fed him, to make sure that this child grows up, this little baby grows up to be a strong little boy. And once he is strong and he is ready and he is healthy, she wants to present him to the temple, uh, in, to the service of the temple the right way. And so she would like, she would then want to make sure that she that he was guided and prayed and fed and you know, the well-being is been taken care of. She doesn't want to give a spoiled good goods to the temple. You know, God doesn't want your secondhand stuff. Things that you don't want, you give it to the church. You know, that's not the way to give. You give God the best. Just make sure that you have done it all, all everything put together. You know, then you surrender it to God. And Hannah honor her word. Remember what she said? If you give me a son, I will consecrate him to the temple and no razor blade will touch his head. And she was honoring God by honoring her word, her promise that she had made to God. You know, sometimes we pray, God, give me this. Then if you give me this, I will give you that. I, you know, it's, be careful what you said because when God gives you, you don't honor, then God will be disappointed with you. And when she made that word, she honored her pledge, her vow. And then in verse 28, she surrendered the son to the temple. So now I give him to the Lord. For his whole life, he will given over to the Lord and he worshiped. And Samuel worshiped the Lord there in the temple. So the mother gave Samuel to the prophet of the day, but it's someone by the name of Eli, for them, for him to care for her son. Therefore, in verse second, uh, first Samuel chapter two, verse thirty, God says this: You know, the God declared, "I promise that members of your family will minister before me forever, and those who honor me, I will honor." You know, when we honor God through our praise and prayer and we, we seek God in everything that we do, we tie, we give our offerings faithfully, we do everything, you know, rightly, and we thank God for everything that he has given us. When we honor God, you know what? He will honor us. He will return it more than 100 fold. Always honor your pledge your vow, your tithes, your offering to God. And give God the best. And God will return his best to you. And Samuel become one of the best prophets Israel ever had. Samuel, as he grew, God appointed him to be God's prophet and to be judge over Israel. It's like during the days before they were, they had kings. Judge were like king, number one person in the entire world, in the entire land of it, the entire country, uh, entire nation called Israel. Became the prophet and the judge over Israel, and then he was instrumental in establishment of Israel monarchy. He appointed Saul as the king. He appointed David as the king. He was there. He appoint, he anoint, and he counseled the kings of Israel. That's how important he became. All because Hannah honored her word, and God honored Hannah by making sure that her son is well taken care of. Hannah prayed, God hears. Hannah trusted God. God heals. Hannah honored her word. God honors her. And her son became successful. Pray in all things. Pray. Pray for everything. Ask for everything. Give thanks for everything. Trust God. Trust God in his time. God will heal. And you honor God with what you have. And God will honor you many folds in return. So mothers, be encouraged. When you pray, you trust, you honor God. You know what? God hears, God heals, and God will honor you in return. So H Hannah 
did not give up. Hannah never gave up. You know what? Mothers, women, don't give up. The Lord is on your side. Happy Mother's Day. Can I pray for you all? Lord, I pray for all the mothers there and women that are out there. Lord, as you have given them gifts as children, in the form of children, may you give them the anointing, the skills, the patience, the love, the compassion for their children. I pray, God, that you give them the strength as they learn to overcome whatever stress that may, they become as part of motherhood, that knowing that you are always there for them and with them and help them to raise their children well and that they will serve you in your kingdom. And I pray all this in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. One more time. Happy Mother's Day.